Worlds Apart, Chapter 7, Another Successful Getaway. Yeonju saw the letters appear, glimmering in the corner of her vision, to be con- and she ran back into the dressing room. At first, she had enjoyed playing dress-up, the chance to immediately refuse extremely expensive clothes after trying them on. Then Kang Chul suggested something specific, and she felt pretty in it, which made her uneasy. It suddenly hit her why she had been sitting at a bus stop for two months of Kang Jul's time. It was because he was the main character. He could come into a shop and be welcome like there was nothing odd about a bachelor taking a young woman into a store to buy her clothes. He could drive fast and furious across a city and the traffic would flow around him. Until something major happened to him, she would be here. There was one thing she immediately thought of but then discarded. But a slap? A slap might do it. Had a woman ever slapped Kang Chul in W? She marched out, ready to do her worst. But apparently, a woman had dared to slap Kang Chul before, or at least he didn't find it shocking. Her hand connected with a shocking sound and a rattle that hurt her wrist, but he just stared at her while she stared at him and glanced around to find nothing was changing. Of course, she panicked, apologized, and turned away. But then she thought, why not? She went back. To her first idea. Kung Chul had definitely not had an on-page kiss. She would know about that. For a second, their lips touched, and she forgot that it was nothing but a tactic. Then she realized again and pulled back. After a brief moment of exultation, the panic returned, and she fled to the dressing room, hoping if she disappeared, she wouldn't do so in the middle of a crowd, staring at the crazy lady. That would not be good for the storyline. She found herself back in the studio, standing in the hallway outside her father's office. She slowly continued on, trying to remember exactly what she'd been planning to say to him. It was only when voices were raised in the dressing rooms that Chul began to feel some alarm. The woman was acting strangely, but then the whole situation was a little strange. What is it? he asked, moving toward the cries. She must have run out somehow, said a shop assistant, coming out looking apologetic. She's gone! A crazy woman, muttered someone in the crowd that had gathered to watch. She certainly had that I'm the head bitch in charge bit going. When he went into the back, there didn't seem to be any way for her to get out, but she'd left her original clothes, including a hospital ID, in a coat pocket. It was the same place as on her business card. When he'd sent that info to the office, they couldn't find any signs of such a hospital. And when they sent out investigators, there was no sign of an underground clinic or mob facility by that name anywhere either. Chul had been kind of hoping, in some part, for her to be a black market surgeon to criminals or something. She had the kind of slightly nervy capability that made him think it possible. He drove home with her abandoned belongings and a little kernel of disappointment that she hadn't held up her end of the bargain. He also kept fighting a little smirk about that swift, adorably tactical kiss. He wasn't sure exactly what the tactic was supposed to be, but it had apparently worked out for her. He admired that. Her father was frowning at his computer screen, phone to his ear. Before Yeonju could speak, he began ranting at his editor, telling her to take down the pages posted. I don't care how many views it has. It's not the official release. I will not stand for it. I know. I have no idea how it ended up posted. Is that an issue you need to investigate carefully before fixing the problem? He hung up and glared at Yeonju. Dad, what's going on? He gestured to the screen. The page for the webtoon had updated, and as she looked, she scrolled down to see herself impulsively kissing Kung Chul. She had forgotten. Everyone here would see the episode as Kung Chul did, including the way she'd ended it with a surprise kiss. She scrolled up, and yes, a totally uncalled for slap. She rubbed her eyes, suddenly feeling ill. Dad, were you there too? Do you know what's been happening? He was silent. You can't kill off Kung Chul. Somehow, I don't know how, he's a living, breathing person. No. He's a monster. There is nothing else I can do but kill him. Forget about what you think happened. It's none of your business. Really? None of my business? Then why, when I was trying to come here to stop you from poisoning him, did I get taken to his side to stop it? He's a monster. He has rebelled against his creator and must be put down. Yeonju 
took a step back involuntarily. Dad, have you been drinking already today? You're talking crazy talk, Yonju, saying that you've met him, saying you've gone to save his life. This sounded vaguely like a threat, and Yonju felt an icy panic rise again. Does it sound like you're sober? You're delusional. I need to get some rest. Leave. Go home. Dad, if Kung Chu is real, killing him would make you a murderer. No, I'm taking care of a problem. He was never supposed to be real. He must not be real. Subong, Yonju needs to be driven home. She's not feeling well. Subong came crashing into the doorway. Yonju, you were here? Where did you go? He looked at the screen and visibly went pale. Realizing she couldn't argue with her father in their current states, Yonju allowed herself to be ushered out. Actually, Subong might be the only ally she had. What has been going on while I was away? she asked once they were in the car. Master O was freaking out. I don't know what about, but it seemed like the pages, pages he hadn't drawn, appeared online. Was that you? As soon as I went to talk to him, I entered Kung Chul's hospital room instead. Dad was drawing a nurse ready to poison him, so I stopped her. And then what? There was this time lapse. Something. Yunju was starting to feel feverish. Two months passed in W's time, but it was only thirty minutes of mine. Can I crack the window? Tsubong assented, though he clearly thought she was crazy. By the time they got back to her home, Yunju was sweating. What if you've come down with an alien disease? Tsubong hissed as he helped her up into the house. Go away, she said. I'll talk to you tomorrow. She went to bed after drinking a quart of water. It said something pretty sad about her life right now that her mother came in that evening and checked on her but didn't say a word, assuming she was in a depressed sleep. If there had been any serious symptoms, she would have gotten help, but it seemed reasonable that her body might be freaking out about missing two months and then coming back to her own time, like a really strange jet lag. She woke up in the morning, feeling a little achy, but otherwise 14 hours of sleep had done her a lot of good. She pulled out her collection of W volumes and began rereading it to try and figure out what was happening.